Friday at Pizza Flicks. Our tall senior has spawned a number of wacky creations, namely his son and the series of movies they made together. In tonight's offbeat comedy, Junior is oddly absent, replaced by items from Fredericks of Hollywood, but it just might be his dad's wackiest creation of all. Mr. doesn't fit that little old salesman me type. Okay, Homer. If I can buy what you sell, I will. That's a promise. I sell pots, pans, baby photos, made-to-order suits, and cosmetics. Well... I mean, I used to in Michigan City, but I gave it up. I'm going after the big stuff now. Good luck, Homer. Thank you. someone else. You don't cross in the middle of the street. Oh, it's legal in Michigan City. In Los Angeles, we use the crosswalk. Thank you very much, sir. Wait a minute, where are you going? I'm going back so I can cross on the crosswalk. Never mind. Thank you, sir. Another cup of that weed killer, please. Ho, ho, ho. Help wanted salesman, salary and commission, Johnson Manufacturing Company, 99 East Magnolia. 43 cents, please. Double or nothing. 43 cents, please. Keep the change. Where would 99 East Magnolia be? Down that way, about four blocks. Thank you. I hope you get the job. You're very kind. Also very pretty. Did anyone ever tell you that? My husband did one. <laughs> Well, tell her every day, mister. Keep her sold. Something about a traveling salesman. Uh, he couldn't sell for sour owl. Sorry. You should be. Is, is anything broken? If there is, I'll find it myself. Well, I was just going to help you out. Are you hurt, Poopsie? Uh, Pettigrew, Homer L. Pettigrew. What? Uh, that's my name. Uh, uh, oh, Are you, you were talking to the dog. Are you going to help me up or not, Mr. Pettigrew? Certainly. Oh, I know you. Is that why you won't help me up? Oh, excuse me. Gee, this is a terrific break for me. I'm a great fan of yours. Huh? I see all of your pictures. You do? Every one of them. Look. A uh, Pettigrew, Homer L. Pettigrew, Michigan City, Indiana. Well, good for you. You're the first movie star I've ever seen in 
person, Miss... Uh... My name is Pamela Johnson. Of course it is. It was right on the tip of my tongue. But I recognize you just like that. Now, if you'll excuse me... Oh, wait a minute. Could I please have your autograph? All I have is the envelope my bus ticket came in, but there's room. Put down something like, to Homer with love, you know? I mean, for the folks back in Michigan City. Hoopsie, bite the man! Pamela Johnson. Is there something else you want? Oh, my name is Homer L. Pettigrew. I'm a salesman from Indiana, Michigan City. You're also late. Down the hall, the first door to your left. Oh, thank you. May I? Why not? Thank you. get a load of Homer there. I thought his eyeballs would drop out. You'd think a Brazier salesman would be used to that sort of thing by now. They never do. Even old Cash himself. Wait a minute. Where did you say he was from? Indiana, I believe. Michigan City. We don't have any salesmen from Michigan City. Carmen, I better get him back. The old man will kill me. Never mind. Just pretend you didn't see him slip by you. <laughs> Me. Got a man. I certainly hope so. Thank you. You're entirely welcome, I'm sure. It's a pleasure. Everyone else is across the hall. Are they? Shouldn't you be over there? I don't know. I'm beginning to like it here. I uh, wouldn't want to keep you from the other. There are more? The room's full of them. Really? Well, I suppose they could at least pop my head in. I think they would appreciate it. If I don't like it in there, May I come back here? You're funny. I say to you again, there is no greater bra than the Johnson bra, the favorite of millions from the rock-bound coasts of Maine to the sunny slopes of Spain. In Omaha, it's Johnson, three to one. In Yakima, we're way out in front. And in Idaho, the potato state, all eyes are on the Johnson bra this year. But gentlemen, Johnson bras are sagging. Our sales curve is way down. Well, Cash, I... And it hurts. It hurts, I tell you, to see your life work in jeopardy. Twenty years ago, I started out with a needle and a spool of thread. And I made the first Johnson bra. I couldn't afford a girl, and my late wife helped me as a model. But gentlemen, I persevered. And how I persevered. I, I made the first black bra, and the first wine color, and the Johnson developer, and the form fit. And then I made the 2A uplift, and made a million during World War II. That reminds me, we haven't had a government contract in 10 years. Well, when we have a new administration, Chief, we'll be in like Flynn. Well, uh, when I say that, that uh, politics monkey around with the bra business, there's something rotten along the Potomac. Chief, it's a social thing. We're a Western company. Besides, you can't legislate bras. Aeroplanes, tanks, missiles, yes, but not bras. I say you're wrong. We've got the crux of the whole situation right in the palms of our hands. We'll sell the senators and the representatives and the VIP. I say you can do more with brows than you can with vicuna coats and cultural exhibits and deep freezes. Gentlemen, 
The Johnson Bras has got to break out in front. You're absolutely right, Chief. Now, this is our self-perpetuating spring and summer 2HB model. Well, come on up and look at it. How can you sell it if you don't see it? There's never been anything like it. You're right there, Mr. Johnson. It's terrific. I think you've got something here. It's good from here. I like it, I like it. Uh, me too. You know, to sell a million. The South will go for this one. New England will love it. It'll be warm in Alaska. We can circle the world with this one. Oh, boy. That's all, honey. Gentlemen. <clears throat> Gentlemen! In 30 days, I want to see this chart read Johnson, Johnson, Johnson. But how? How? You've seen our, bra, our product. Now, who can come up with something? Give me an idea. How about selling them door to door? Take the product right to the consumer. You're crazy. What was that? Take the product right to the consumer. Say that again. Get to the source. Get sympathy. Tug at their heartstrings. Sell direct, like pots and pans and baby pictures. Yes, sir. Go on, go on. Well, my old boss used to say, there's nothing as easy to sell as a housewife. Her husband's at work, mad at her. She wants somebody to talk to her, tell her she's pretty. Oh, you've got a deal. You're nuts. I don't even know you. Where did you come from? Well, my name is Homer L. Pettigrew. I came in to answer to your ad to the newspaper. Well, the job's been filled. Out. Uh, just a minute now. He's got ideas. We like men with ideas. Uh, come on, uh, uh, what would you do, Mr. Pettigrew? First, I'd go after the important people, get their pictures wearing Johnson bras. Mrs. Senator so-and-so, Mrs. Governor, or what you call it, Mrs. General VIP, and especially movie stars like uh, Pamela Johnson. Hey, the name's the same. That would be a natural tie-up with Johnson bras. Well, it ought to be. She's my daughter. She is? You've got a movie star for a daughter? I've just got a daughter. You leave her name out of this. You mean she isn't a movie star? I thought... I said leave Pamela's name out of this. Uh, never mind. Now, uh, uh, come on. Uh, what else would you do? Uh, pedigree. Homer L. Pettigrew. First, I'd get a sales kit full of bras. All kinds. I'd get into the home and I'd sell the mother and the daughter. Uh, and then what? Well, if you sell all the women in that house, uh, there's no more business. So you go on to the next house. And the next. And the, and the next. I get the idea. Damn it. Johnson calling the house of beautiful bras. Poetry in motion. If they don't bring them to us, we'll take Johnson bras left. We can use hi-fi and sell them with soft music. From 50 to 50, you're still gonna look empty. A pretty girl is like a, a Johnson bra. It's, it's what's up front that sells. Before we're through, we'll put a Johnson bra on every... On every girl in the world! Gentlemen, we now have something big to think about. back again. He's waiting to see Mr. Johnson. You're in for a long siege, brother. Mr. Johnson, ask him to wait. Oh, Mr. Pettigrew, this is our Miss Cotton. Oh, I'm pleased to meet you. Mr. Pettigrew is going to be with us. Well, I suppose that's better than being against us. They call me Candy. Oh, Cotton Candy. No, Candy Cotton. There's a difference. <laughs> Yes, Mr. Johnson. Right away. Not you. Cash wants to see you, Candy. Right. When's all I've got time for? The old man is waiting. The old buzzard. Look, if I can put up with you and that daughter of his, you could hold still for cash and me. I don't have to like it, do I? See you tonight? Don't wait up for me. I've got to go over to the old man's house for dinner. Wedding plans? Oh, you know better than that. You wouldn't double-cross me. Don't worry. Pamela Johnson will last only as long as it takes me to get a partnership. And control of the company for us. For us. You 
wanted me. Every hour of every day. Every hour of every day, be beautiful the Johnson way. No, that's not a slogan. You meant that for me. How sweet. When are you going to take me seriously? Remember, Cash, we agreed that this is going to be just a fun game. You agreed. It amounts to the same thing. So other than that, what can I do for you? Well, there's a home or somebody or other out in the outer office. I saw him. Uh, I'd like to have you bring him out to the house tonight. Sure thing. Big client? No, he's a salesman. Kind of a crackerjack. I just put him on. But he reminds me of myself when I first started out. I'll treat him just like he was you. Don't you dare. You just take him out to the house and nothing more. <laughs> okay. Ooh. You have been practicing. You're the only one, I swear. Sometimes I wish I could believe you. You try me. Maybe later. I'll go date up Homer Weston. <laughs> This new salesman. Who, Pettigrew? What about him? Cash talks about him like he's a long-lost son. I'm supposed to bring him out to the house tonight. That square? No one goes out to that house but me. Homer does. <laughs> As of now. You know, he sold the old man a bill of goods on house-to-house -house peddling. That's not a bad idea. But it won't work. Why not? Because you and I are going to see that it doesn't. August, I don't want to argue about it. I'm not arguing, Cash, but you want to know what I think, don't you? Well, I want to know what everybody thinks, especially the American housewife. That's why I say we don't reject an idea until we first tried it out. Right. Let's try it out, then reject it. Come again? Well, what I mean is, let's try it out in such a way that if it flops, it doesn't cost us anything. Well, how do you mean? Well, this was Pettigrew's idea, right? Mm -hmm. Let him do it. Why should we go and hire a bunch of new salesmen when we can put Pettigrew out into the territory and see what kind of reaction we get? I get it. We try the brassiere on to see if it fits. Exactly. Oh, hello, darling. Good evening, August. Am I interrupting anything, Dad? No, just talking shop. Isn't that a new dress you've got on? My, we're in a good mood tonight, aren't we? He usually says, isn't that another new dress? Well, I don't want to scare August off. Uh, nothing could scare me away from Pamela. I am pretty extravagant. Are you sure you can afford me? Well, if a full partner can't, I don't know who can. Yeah, we've got to talk about that one of these days. Well, there's no time like the present. Oh, yes, there is. I know that the rest of the evening is going to be nothing but business, and I'll end up sitting in some corner by myself. So right now, I want my two men to talk about me. <laughs> she always gets her own way, August. You're going to have to fix that. Oh, I love her just the way she is. That's my man that said that. Like I said, I, I didn't make a very good impression on Pamela, or Mr. Johnson's daughter. Well, you did knock her down. I told you it was an accident. If Pamela no like, Papa no like. Maybe I'd better apologize all over again. I'll see what I can do for you. I'd sure appreciate it. Leave everything to me. Good evening, Miss Cotton. Good evening, Marie. Where is everyone? I believe they are in the den. Sell, sell, sell. I'm not knocking it. Let's fortify ourselves. Thank you. Don't forget you promised to straighten me out with Miss Johnson. I'll take care of you. Well, here they are now. Yo! Miss Johnson, I'd like to.
Now, that's the situation as it stands. I love the idea, but uh, you're going to have to prove it before I go out on a limb. I'm willing, Mr. Giles. That's the spirit, son. Uh, is that the 2-H leopard? Yes, sir. What do you think? It doesn't send me. Uh, Candy, remind me to look into that. Right. Hmm. Are you still here? Stay away from me. Miss Johnson, you don't know how sorry I am. Dad, keep him away from me. I know, and it was just an accident. He's dangerous. I didn't mean any harm. It could happen to anybody. Put that drink down. Uh, over there somewhere. Yes, sir. Now he looks harmless. Shake hands, we'll all be friends. If it's all the same to you, I'll just nod. No, in a Johnson, there's a deep sense of fair play. I'm awfully sorry. It's all right. I, I didn't mean any harm, really. All right. I wouldn't have had this happen for the world. All right. Uh, uh, oh! Oh! Wait, please, wait. Let it go. He's locking himself up, but good. Please, Miss Johnson, let me apologize. Leave this house immediately. Please, Miss Johnson. If you don't, I'll... Please leave, Mr. Pettigrew. I can't take any more. All right, I'll go. But before I do, let me say this. You're the most beautiful girl I've ever seen. And I think I'm in love with you. What? Yes, uh, I use the word think because nothing like this ever happened to me before. You hit me like a ton of bricks. I hit you? Yeah, uh, saying I'm sorry won't repair any of the damage, but here. Go ahead. Hit me with it. Never mind. Go ahead. It'll make you feel better. Forget it. No, no, I insist. Go ahead. Kick me. Step on me. Kick me. Come on. I'd probably break a toe. No, no, no. Wait, look. look. See? You're crazy. You want a job with my dad. Yes, I do. But I'm in love with you more. All right, you have my word that you have a job with Johnson Bras for the rest of your life. Now what do you say? That's it, isn't it? No, I love you. I love you. See? <laughs> See? But I'm engaged to marry August Poe. Oh, that'll be terrible. But I love you. I still love you. You missed a spot on your lapel. <laughs> May I get you a glass, sir? Well, August turned out to be quite a night. I'm sorry I suggested putting that idiot Pettigrew on, Chief. Oh, the whole thing was my idea, you know it. Well, yes, sir, but... Well, I thought since Pamela's going to be mad at whoever that brought... That is an understatement. Well, I thought it'd be better all the way around if she figured I was responsible for him and that, uh... uh August, you're a good man and I appreciate it, but you'd better let me take full responsibility for this. <laughs> <laughs> sell, sell, sell. <laughs> well, here we are, Homer. Here is where you put your idea to work. And I picked this neighborhood out for you myself. That's awfully good of you, Mr. Poe. You know, I somehow got the feeling you didn't like me. Nonsense. Nonsense. Whatever our differences might have been, remember, we're both Brazier men, and that's what counts in the end. I'm glad you feel that way. Now, have you got everything? Sample case? How about your order book? I and think the pencil? So. Uh huh. All righty. Well, Homer, good luck, boy. Thank you.
Johnson bra man. The form divine can be thine with a Johnson bra. Oh, hold that black one up, will you? It'll look much better on you, but this will give you the general idea. I'll take it. Uh, these are merely samples. I can write you out an order and deliver the merchandise next week. Fine. Now, what size shall I put down? Gee, I don't know. I never wore that style before. Have you got a tape measure with you? Uh, suppose you uh, try one or two of these on in there, and I'll take care of the pants. Okay. Gee, these are almost too fancy to waste on Al. I 
could have sworn you had somebody in there. Well, maybe I have. Why don't you look for my lover in the living room under the couch? Don't think I won't! Are you still in there? No. Oh, it's all right. It's only me. I'll keep him busy in the living room. You go out the side way. Wait. You forgot to sign my order book. Oh, for heaven's sake. No, samples. I'm your Johnson Bra man. You're kidding. No, I really am. Well, if you're not too tired from your last uh, sale, I think we can do some business. Come on. Certainly. Certainly. Good afternoon, ladies. I am Homer L. Pettigrew, your Johnson Bra man. Mine? Oh, mine. Oh, no, you don't. We'll divide him up between us. Perhaps you ladies are not familiar with our new line. Somebody pour this man a drink. A Johnson Bra will never let you down. Now, if I may. Ah, oh, look at the goodies. Hey, I like that one. I saw it first. <laughs> ladies, these are merely samples. Do you have this in my size? Absolutely. What is my size? Well, I... Don't you know? No. Uh, suppose you measure me. I, I couldn't do that. No measurement? Must say. Well, I, I'll buy as many as she does. Me too. Measure me. Hello, Anna. Are you having the girls for bridge today? Well, listen. Never mind the cards. There's the cutest little man here. Guess what he's selling door to door. I'm your Johnson Bra man. Oh, rough day. Well, did you make any sales at all? Can I see Mr. Johnson? Uh, oh, you, you don't want to see Mr. Johnson now. You better rest the best friend. Now, you just sit right there and don't move, and I'll be right back. Later. We've got problems. Why, what's the matter? Boy Wonder is outside. Pettigrew? <laughs> is he about ready to give up? What do you think? Fantastic. Has Cass seen these? No. Good girl. Well, he's got to see him eventually. He will, honey, he will. But right now, we're going to take all these orders and transfer them to my account. Yours? Certainly. Now, go out and get Pettigrew before he talks to anybody. All right. Mr. Poe will see you now. Oh, I wanted to see Mr. Johnson. Well, Mr. Poe is the sales manager. You see him first, and then you see Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Wasn't that Homer? Yes, it was. He's gone into Mr. Poe's office. But I don't think they wish to be right now. When they're finished, would you tell Mr. Pettigrew I'd like to see him? Certainly, Miss Johnson. Sit down, Pettigrew. Sit down. Yes, sir. I was just looking over your order book. I think I did rather well for the first day. Yes, yes, if these orders hold up. Well, those orders are all genuine. I didn't say they weren't. 
Sometimes the customer may change your mind and cancel. Oh, I don't think that'll happen. I've generally found a sale as a sale. Uh, have you ever handled brassiers before? No, sir. Well, I have, and believe me, orders for anything from pots to pianos may stand, but brassiers just don't hold up. Well, some of those orders may not pan out, but I think I've proved my point about house-to-house -house selling. Is that what you want to say to Mr. Johnson? Do you want to go into his office and tell him, Mr. Johnson, today I sold 150 bras? Uh, 208. Why, that's even worse. Why, if you tell him 208 and, and it dwindles down to, say, 50, what's he going to think? Now, have you stopped to think about that, Homer? I guess not. Well, I have. And believe me, here's the thing to do. Wait. Go out in the field, wait until the COD orders come in, and then hit him with the cold, hard cash. Then he'll really appreciate you. You think so? Why, that's how he got his name. Cash. I see. Good. Now, Homer, this is only an indication. Homer, I want you to go out into that field and sell, sell, sell. I will. Good boy. Oh, look, Homer. Uh, there's no need for you to come back to the office every night. Just mail your orders in. And if you need anything, don't hesitate to call Miss Cotton or me. We don't want to go bothering Mr. Johnson. Not until we're ready for him, boy. Yes, sir. Good man. You can go home now. Mr. Johnson is still here. That's all right. I'll cover for you. Mr. Poe said that you would give me another order book. Sure thing. The old one's all filled. That's nice. I don't suppose you're expecting Miss Johnson to drop in this afternoon. She very seldom comes to the office. Oh. Good afternoon. About ready to close up for the night, Chief? Oh, hello, darling. I didn't know you were here. Where's Homer? Who? Mr. Pettigrew. He was with you, wasn't he? How did you know that? Was Pettigrew here? Why wasn't I told? Well, where is he now? I think he's gone. Well, really? what about Pettigrew? Oh, never mind her. How many bras did he sell? None. Not a single one. He bombed out. Oh. But don't worry about it, Chief. Listen, I've got an idea. Oh, Miss Cotton. Did Mr. Pettigrew leave? Yes, about five minutes ago. Didn't you tell him I wanted to see him? Yes, I did, but he was pressed for time. I see. Thank you. I forgot my purse. See that that isn't all you forget. <laughs> Catch Pettigrew? Who? I hope you don't think I went to see him. I couldn't care less. Well, just as well, we're gonna have to let him go. You mean fire him? Had to. Didn't sell a single bra all day. But you can't fire him. I thought you didn't care what happened to him. Well, I don't, but I promised he had a job with Johnson Bras. <laughs> well, in that case, honey, perhaps we can find something for him to do. August, how about, uh, well, Does I... it have to be business, business, business all the time? Do we or don't we have a date? Ah, uh, we do. <laughs> oh, Mr. Poe. About the Henderson contract. Well, I... I am sorry, Miss Cotton, but Mr. Poe has promised me he will not say one word about business until tomorrow. What was that? Oh, Candy, I thought you'd gone home. What was that noise out here? That was me. I dropped a paperweight. Well, I suppose you're busy tonight, as usual. No, Mr. Johnson, I'm not. Well, would you care to have dinner with me? I would love to. Good morning.
morning. Good morning. Taking your little brother for an airing. Isn't that nice? Not my brother. He's my son. Really? I never would have thought so. Oh! Good morning, madam. I'm your Johnson Bra Man. You are doubtlessly familiar with our product. There is a Johnson Bra for all occasions. For example, the ever popular uplift strapless for that formal dance. The free swinging spelt for hiking in the open air. The hug me for intimate cocktail hours. Nighty night for comfort and protection while you slumber. And the revolutionary K-13 inflatable. For the woman with the problem. Whatever your wish, whatever your need, you're in good hands with Johnson. Do you have anything for beginners? It hurts me to see Johnson bras off like this. That is bound to be an upswing soon. Well, I certainly hope so. What do you want? Two things. First, I forgive you for last night. Oh, good! The second is business. Oh. Mr. Poe isn't in his office. Oh, well, I forgot to tell you. He wanted to try this door-to-door -door selling out himself. Permanently? Oh, yeah, a couple of days. You see, I like the idea. We just didn't have the right man for it. Sometimes a man can get a good idea, but he can't carry it out. Homer? Exactly. Now, if August brings in the orders that I think he will... It wouldn't surprise me if he filled his whole order book in one day. In fact, I'll bet he sells 200 bras. 200? That's impossible. Well, he'll do it. Yeah. After all, you trained him, didn't you? Well, yes, I did, but... Even if he just makes a good showing, you multiply that by 5,000 salesmen and Johnson Bras will be on top again. Mr. Johnson's office. Just a moment. Here he is now. August? Hello there, boy. How are you? You out there ringing doorbells. Uh, I declare. Chief, things are going just great. Of course, it's a little rough on the shoe leather when you're not used to it, but I'm not going to let that stop me. Well, you just function as an average salesman. I'm trying to, but I find it so difficult to, to hold back. I, I get so enthusiastic. I know what you mean. There's something about a Johnson bra that gets you right here. Tell me, is it too early for an indication? No, I don't think so. My opinion is, go ahead. Do you mean it? Stand by. You think the door-to-door -door selling will really work? Absolutely. But don't expect any of your salesmen to come close to my record. Oh, I won't, I won't. Then I say, full speed ahead. Atta boy. You know, I like the idea. I can't understand why Pettigrew couldn't do it. Well, you know how things are, Chief. Ideas are a dime a dozen. A man has to be able to carry them out, and Pettigrew just wasn't a man. What do you think we ought to do with him? Well, I've been giving that some thought. Chief, he's a country boy. Maybe our mistake was in thinking that he could adapt himself to the big city. You're the sales manager, August. You send him wherever you want to. I'll take care of it tonight, Chief. Uh, right now I have some more sales to make, so I'll check in with you later. Bye. Atta boy, bye. <laughs> There's a Brazier man. Well, let's get with it. Let's get in motion around here. I want a meeting of all the department heads in 15 minutes. Yes, sir. And make that 10. Yes, sir. And uh, get New York, Chicago, Omaha, Washington on the line. We'll make it a conference call. Yes, sir. And uh, you get a new roll of ribbon. There's going to be some changes in that chart. Uh, that's what happens when you train a man yourself. Hi there, home.
Palmer. Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Paul. Well, just about through for the day, boy? Yes, sir. I had an even better day than yesterday. Well, that, that's good. You know, that's a funny thing, but I've got a suitcase just like that. That is yours. I took the liberty of packing it for you. You're going to take a little trip. I don't understand. It was suggested by Cash personally. You know, Homer, he likes you. I was in with him this morning, giving him a pitch about you, telling him how well you've been doing. Hey, that's awfully nice of you. Ah, uh, don't mention it. You know the way I figure it? What's good for Braziers is good for both of us. I feel that way, too. And I knew you would. And so did Mr. Johnson. You know, he has made you special field representative for Johnson Bras. Special field representative? I never expected anything like that. Well, you've got it, Homer, and nobody deserves it more. I don't know what to say, except what's a field representative? Why, it's a man who works out in the field. Oh, I should have known. And where do you find more fields than anywhere else? In the country. Those kind of fields? Your plane leaves in an hour. Come on and get in and I'll drive you to the airport. Do I have to leave right now? You know Cash's motto. A day wasted is a day wasted. And he's absolutely right. How long will I be gone? Oh, a month, two months. I'll let you know when you can come back. Now, come on, get in. We've got to hurry. I guess I can call from the airport. Call who? The cleaners. I want to make sure they hold my suit for me. I'm sure they will. What's the matter? I've got to make that phone call. Check at the ticket desk first. You can make the phone call later. Flight 67 from Bakersfield, Fresno, and Sacramento. Now arriving, gate 9 on the East Concourse. The Johnson residence. Hello, Marie. Uh, this is August Poe. Is Miss Johnson there? Yes, she is. Just a moment, I'll call her. Uh, no, Marie, uh, wait a minute. Uh, I want to talk to you. How would you like to make an easy $10? It's never that easy, Mr. Poe. All you have to do is leave the phone off the hook for a half hour. That's all? I swear it. You just spent $10. <laughs> I'm uh, just saving this phone for you. Thanks. Flight 601 to Tucson, Albuquerque, Oklahoma City, Knoxville, and Raleigh. Now loading passengers from gate 4 on the East Concourse. <laughs> Remember, sell, sell, sell. Thank you, Mr. Poe. And I want you to know I appreciate everything you've done for me. Ah, think nothing of it.
May I take that from you, sir? Well, no, thank you. I can hold it. As you wish. Is there anything breakable in it? Well, hardly. Did I say something funny? Are you a collector? Oh, no. I'm a Johnson bra man. Uh, that is, I sell Johnson bras. They're lovely. May I look at them? Help yourself. It's a living. These bra people sure come up with new ideas, don't they? They have to, to stay abreast of the competition. I just wanted to... Never mind, I'll drink it black. Everyone wants to put up a good front. That's a basic desire. For example, uh, what is your business, Mr. Hawley? As a matter of fact, I am chairman of the board for this airline. You are? Mr. Hawley, have you considered making all of your stewardesses happy? By putting them in Johnson bras, I suppose? Exactly! Alice, are those bras of his any good? They're great. What's the matter? <gasps> ah. Never mind the overlapping grip. Look at this. When do you suppose that happened? I don't know. I was with him every minute at the airport. That little squirt can sell. You've got to give him credit. I'm not going to give him anything. Why do I show these to Cash? Don't take the letter with you. It mentions Homer by name. Burn it. Well, we're not on top yet, August, but thanks to the way you've handled that door-to-door -door campaign, business is up 15%. Those figures are all wrong, Cash. They better not be. They're much too low. I just swung a new deal. All of this? One order? That's just the initial order. From now on, all the stewardesses on all the airlines wear nothing but Johnson bras. How do you like that? Oh, that's wonderful. I didn't know you had a deal going with the airlines. Well, I, I wasn't sure it was going to pan out, so uh, I figured I wouldn't say anything until it did. Oh, well, that's understandable, but I kind of like to know what's going on around here. I haven't retired yet. Well, from now on, you will, Chief. Any deals that come in, you'll know it just as soon as I do. Fine. Uh, what happened to... what's his name? Uh, who's that, Chief? The little guy Pamela was asking about him this morning. She was? Yeah. Any scoop on him? Well, no, not exactly. In fact, I was just about ready to write him off. Oh, well, he's only been out about a week. Uh, you gave him a good territory, didn't you, August? Chief, I gave him the best territory we have. I'm your Johnson Bra man. What? I've been given the privilege of introducing Johnson Bras in this beautiful hill country. That's real nice. I think so. You hear that, Ma? This here fellow has come to visit with us. That's real neighborly of you, stranger. Think we'll get any more rain? I'm afraid you don't quite understand. I sell bras. Brazier. By golly, they'll do it every time. Something new every day, seem like. Last time we bought this thing from a traveling salesman, I was 13. Just married. You be a lightning rod salesman too, mister? Uh, bras. I sell bras. Well, why didn't you say so before? Oh, it's my fault. I really should have. Oh, well, I understand now, but I'm afeard you're wasting your time. You see, I've worked this farm here by myself. 
Why, besides, we ain't even got electricity to run newfangled gadgets. Shane, you come all this way for nothing. How have you had? Uh, you still don't understand. Here, let me show you. Well, I'll be doggone, so that's what a brassy ear be. Ain't they pretty, Pa? They sure are. I could use some of these, son. You could? Why, sure. It gets pretty cold up here in these hills. Besides, a nice warm pile of earmuffs like this come in mighty handy. Ain't that right, Ma? You want some? Uh, I don't think that would work. Oh, hi. The young fellow's right. They'd be much too pretty for me. Why don't you just get one set for yourself, Pa? All right, Ma. And you can pick out the color, if they ain't too expensive. Ma's got a real good eye for things like that. Always knows what goes or what else goes with it. Brassiers are not for men. They're for women. Son, we treat our women folk kindly and proper in these here parts. If it's too cold of a morning, why, they can come back indoors just as soon as they get their chores done. And they don't need nothing like this to keep them warm. Women don't wear brassiers to keep warm. Well, then what are they good for? Can't you tell them, madam? Shucks, mister. This would never keep a body's ears warm. Why, you can see right through it. What was it you wanted I should tell, Pa? Uh, excuse us. Really? Oh, land sake. Really? No, what, what, what be all that about? You, you ain't fixing to act up like that lightning rod salesman, are you? Well, if you'll just be patient, sir, uh, I believe everything will be all right in just a few minutes. Son, in these parts, we don't like our women folk to have secrets. Now, that lightning rod salesman, he lit out of here with a seat of his pants filled with buckshot. Come in here for a minute. You just name your price, son, and I'll pay for it. That, that, that what you call it takes me back 25 years. Uh, that was our Johnson Gay Deceiver. It comes to $8.43 with tax. Uh, let me see now. Uh, uh, I got an nanny goat that'll just about cover it. I was afraid of that. Don't you people in this part of the country have any cash? What fur? Well, as you say, sir, what fur? Uh, where's the goat? Well, I don't like to bother the goats once they've bedded down. You better spend the night here. You, you can sleep in baby's room. Well, if it's all the same to you, sir, I can put up in the barn. You see, I roll around a lot in my sleep, and I wouldn't want to crush the little tyke. It ain't hospitable to sleep in the barn. You sleep in baby's room. Baby? Yeah, Pa? Made another sale, eh? Sure wish I had me a good business like you got. <laughs> For all the good it does me. What am I gonna do with all this? Well, ain't none of my business. But why don't you sell them? There isn't three dollars cash in these entire hills. Well, there's plenty of money in the city. You could load up a truck and take the whole kit and caboodle in. Is that truck of yours for sale? Well, it just so happens it is. For, uh, cash money, which you ain't got. Correct. But I got something much better. A franchise. I never touch the stuff. It stains the teeth. I'm talking about a piece of paper that gives you the exclusive right to sell Johnson bras in this territory. What good will that do me? Good? I'll give you an example. Last night... <laughs> like I am. That Pamela is running me ragged. Yes, it must be very tiring, night clubbing every evening. But of course, I wouldn't know. I stay home all the time. Do you think I like it? Believe me, just as soon as I get control of the company, Pamela is through. She better be. Hmm. In case you're interested, you swung another big deal today. Huh? What did I do? You broke the whole state of West Virginia into franchise areas. And the orders are pouring in. Good for me. Oh, by the way, um, where is the hayseed now? In Newport, waiting for instructions. 
A clerk telegram says he's doing a lot of business but needs cash for expenses. Hmm. He uh, hasn't got his check yet. Newport. That's by the ocean, isn't it? Yes. Maybe he'll drown. <laughs> I can't find it. Oh, all right. Now you behave yourself. Dear Pamela, the ocean is beautiful this time of day. And anything that is beautiful automatically makes me think of you. I've written you every day that I've been gone. Telling you how much I love you. You've never answered my letters. But then, maybe I have no right to expect that. Second thought, you tell Bobby you're closer to retirement age than I am. Right. Looks nice. It fits perfectly. I don't know how to thank you. I'm just trying to thank you. Where's the hat? Oh, they didn't deliver one. They didn't? Sit down. Hello, this. This is Cabana 26. Brigadier General Van Smythe speaking. Why the hell's that hat? Well, it damn sure better be. 
You can't talk to him like he's one of your soldiers, dear. He's lucky he's not. Mr. Pettigrew, your bras are lovely. My husband's going to buy a great many of them. That's right, Homer. All you got. You'll do that, too, Waddy. I mean, really buy. What's the sense of being head of procurement if you can't do a friend a favor? Are you that, General Smythe? Well, yes, I am, Mr. Pettigrew, but you've got to understand. I can buy guns and ships and planes and tanks, but to uh, the Sears. You buy uniforms and everybody has to wear them. Why can't you make Mr. Pettigrew's bras part of the official uniform? Just for the women, of course. I can't do that. You'll do that, Waddy, or your next purchase will be twin beds. Mr. Pettigrew, can you come to Washington? Yes, sir. Well, good morning, honey. You going into the office? No, I'm going on a picnic. This is my lunch. Matter, you know, when you were a little girl, you used to think that was funny. I guess I'm all grown up now. And nothing's funny anymore? You know, you haven't been the same since the night... What's his name was here? That's my trouble exactly. I know what his name is. Homer L. Pettigrew. And I can't get it out of my head. It's that bad. Isn't it ridiculous? Well, now, you're just going to have to forget it because he's strictly no good. Are you sure you're not holding out on me, Dad? You don't know where he is? Honey, I wish I did. But we haven't seen him or heard a word from him since he left the office. Here's the daily communique. That little squirt has written Pamela every day since he's been gone. Isn't that just slightly against the law? I'm not interfering with the males. I'll see that she gets every one of them after I have control of the company. And just when will that be? Soon, baby. Soon. August, by all that's holy, I should be mad. <laughs> Cash, I can explain everything. You see, well, I... I can't. This government order is going to run into millions. Government order? It just came in. I told you to let me know about things like this. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm not responsible for this. Uh, personally, then. Well, who is then? Uh, uh, well, I, I, I had outside help. Uh, an old army buddy of mine, he, he took care of the details. Uh, uh, Waddy Smythe. Well, it doesn't matter. The fact remains that you did it, and Johnson Brows are on top. And I can quit. Quit? Mm -hmm. Just as soon as you and Pamela are married. After we're married? Yes. I want to see Pamela settled down and happy. And then I'm going to take a trip around the world with a long stopover in Paris. <laughs> What's he so athletic about? Homer Pettigrew has written a big government contract, and Cash thinks I did it. He won't for long. Homer will be here tomorrow morning. According to this, he doesn't leave Washington until... Uh, excuse me, honey. Give me an outside line. Long distance, uh, would you give me the Office of National Security in Washington, D.C., please? Uh -huh. And hurry. What are you doing? Buying myself a little time, baby. Hello, uh, Office of National Security? I'd like to report a mad bomber. Uh, yes, uh, uh, we have every reason to believe this is a very dangerous character. Now, his name is Homer L. Pettigrew. At least that's the name he's been going under. Uh, now, he's, he's five foot six and uh, weighs about 125 pounds, and, and he carries a small satchel. Oh, oh, he's going to be leaving Washington National Airport today at 4.30. Uh, oh, yes, and we think that there's a bomb in that satchel.
What's the idea? It's my day off. Miss Pamela's in the backyard. you forever. Let's get married now. What? My bags are in the car. We can be in Las Vegas in five hours. I love you, Pamela. Do you, August? With all my heart. You wouldn't run away and leave me, would you? Never. You wouldn't just disappear and not send so much as a postcard? I'll never leave your side. Not for an instant. <laughs> all right. Let's get married. That'll show certain people. Oh, my darling, that's wonderful. Let's call Dad and tell him. We can call him when we get to Las Vegas. All right, I'll just be a minute. If you'll just let me call my boss. We're not paying for any long distance calls to the Kremlin. The Kremlin? What do you think I am? We know what you are. Call General Wadsworth Smythe. Are you trying to say that an American general is in this plot with you? I, I'm not in anything. He's not in anything. I sell brassiers. you eavesdropping on a telephone conversation again. That's okay by me. I was just doing you a favor. I can take care of myself. Then you better start. That was Marie, the Johnson maid. Pamela is on her way to Las Vegas to get married. To whom? Whom do you think? August Poe. That was the name. Why, that's dirty. Today, Candy. It's the day to celebrate. Pamela's getting married. Pamela's <laughs> getting double crossed. And so am I. And so are you. Start reading. All right, Pettigrew or Pettigrewski. We can keep this up as long as you can. Take that thing out of here. All right, Chief. You sure? Look. Brazier's. That's what I've been trying to tell you. The Johnson Brazier's all right. We've got the Los Angeles office on the phone now. Can I talk to them? Go ahead. Stand for that Los Angeles calling in this office. Brazier's. If Barry Goldwater ever hears about this. Hello? Who? Oh, Joan? Let me speak to Mr. Johnson. There's nobody here but me. I don't know what's going on. 
All I know is Mr. Johnson left a message for you. He said if you were to call or come in to tell you you were to get to Las Vegas just as fast as you can. She's getting married. Goodbye. I've got to get to Las Vegas. When's the next plane leave? There's one in two hours. That'll be too late. You guys got me into this. Now it's up to you to get me out of it. Sorry, there's nothing we can do. Get me Barry Goldwater. And while you're at it, Fulton Lewis Jr. What I'll do, I'll kill him. We'll have to wait in line. You get off the plane. Mr. Johnson. Yeah. Candy's getting the car downstairs. Well, well, where's Pamela? Have you seen her? Is she married yet? I don't know. We just got here. The Homer L. Pettigrew? Yes. Littlefield, Office of National Security. Oh, no. Not that again. Look. That's all I've got. Revere's. We just got a teletype from the Washington office, so we've been expecting you. The party you want just registered at a downtown hotel. Well, let's go. Come on! gathered here today in the face of this company to join this man and this woman in the bonds of holy matrimony. Holy! I haven't come to that part yet. Well, uh, we want to get in on this. Uh, all right, get your bets down. I, I mean, join hands. All right, once again. Dearly beloved, we are gathered in the face of this company to join these men and these women in the bonds of holy matrimony. Homer, do you take this woman, Pamela, to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. And Cash, do you take this woman, Candy, to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. And Pamela, do you take this man, Homer, to be your lawful wedded husband? And Candy, do you take this man, Cash, to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. Then I pronounce you both man and wife. Thank you. 